the alpha antihydrogen experiment at CERN. When we zoom in on the alpha experiment, we see the central bit of the apparatus here, with on the outside the three-layer annihilation detector now opening up, and on the inside the minimum magnetic field trap that is used to trap the antiatoms. This is wound on top of the vacuum chamber that holds the atoms inside and consists of an octopole and two mirror coils. These magnets together generate a sort of magnetic bathtub potential where there's a minimum in field strength at the center of the apparatus and a maximum along the walls and the ends. We now open up the system to so have a look inside. Inside the vacuum chamber we have electrodes. These electrodes are essentially metal cylinders that can be charged to different potentials to manipulate the charged particles along the axis. We zoom in to look at the actual potential holding the charged particles. We see how the positrons and the antiprotons are held before they're merged. And now we have the merger where we move the potential to bring the antiprotons into contact with the positrons. Antiprotons enter the positron plasma and through a collision of three particles simultaneously, a positron can be bound to an antiproton and the excess energy is taken away by another positron and we have antihydrogen. The antihydrogen is slightly magnetic and can be captured by the magnetic field that we have generated by energizing the coils around before we make this formation of the antihydrogen. We can detect the antihydrogen by releasing it from the trap, switching off the magnetic field, the antihydrogen then collides with the wall and annihilates, and here we see how the tracks of the pions coming out of this annihilation are detected by the three-layer detector and reconstructed. Now in the recent results, we see how the laser can excite the antihydrogen atom inside. Again, as an ex in the example here, we have two antihydrogen trapped inside the apparatus. We shine a laser through. The laser power is multiplied by resonating it between these two mirrors. And in this very strong laser light, an antihydrogen atom can be excited. It needs two photons to be excited from the ground state to the first excited state, which we just saw, and then a third photon to be photoionized. So the postron is kicked out of the atom, of the antiatom. Now the antiproton is not trapped and collides with the wall and annihilates, and we can detect that. At the end, we can also detect whichever antihydrogen atoms might be remaining in the standard way by releasing them from the trap, where they annihilate on the walls.